So you move into a community that is majority black already? Completely black. Completely black. 99%. And, and so, but this is in the, you get there in 50, what? 50, 1951. So in 51, this part of Compton is all black. Yes. It was a community that was built by Biltmore developers. I have the original package, okay? And what it is is that it opened up the the the, uh, the buying. They didn't have covenants. 1951. Uh, they didn't have any covenant for this particular project. So it was uh, it was bought by black veterans, basically, people that had they had money. They weren't broke. So my community was really nice. They had manicured lawns. Everybody knew everybody. It was a great, great place for me to grow up. So we're talking about middle class blacks. Middle class to the bone. But only on the west side of Compton. Yes. East side of Compton was still what? Completely white. Totally, completely. The only street that was black was 136th Street and the street over me, 137th. Okay? Those are the only two streets that had that were black. Up up to up to Palmer Lee. And uh, like I said, it was 99% black. Now, in your book, and don't hesitate to hold your book up and show it, you mention this one street that is very affluent, where I guess the first black person moved in there at some point. Yes. What was the name of this little, oh, you guys called it Compton Hollywood, I think? This is in Compton, East Compton. It was Compton Hollywood. That's later on. Okay, that's later on, yeah. Okay, so... So you, you get there, what's the school that you uh, eventually get enrolled in when you first moved there? My mom was very, very religious. She was a stone-to-the-bone Catholic and a stone-to-the-bone Democrat, okay? And that's how they were in those days. So she made sure that I went to a parochial school. But the only parochial school in the area was in Watts. It was called St. Leo's. It was on 118th in Imperial, right off next door to Success Avenue. So they enrolled me in St. Leo's, uh, which, believe it or not, it was basically because it was a Catholic school and it was in Watts. But most of the students that were there that were black were Creoles and with a last name like Boulon J. I fit right in. <laughs> so, yeah, so these are, these are blacks with a little French ancestry. That I fit right in. And I'm assuming most of them were probably from Louisiana and Texas. They were all from Louisiana and Texas, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so this school... Uh, St. Leo's was majority black? Yeah. It was about 75% black and 25% Latino. And just a few white folks. There was one family that came in. They only lasted very, uh, like, like uh, one semester. Okay, so you're basically going through, I guess, a culture shock because you're going from a school in Boyle Heights, pretty much mostly white, right? Right. To now mostly black and just, <laughs> you know... And, and like that, right? Snap of a finger. Yeah, so what, what were you personally feeling as a 10, 11 year old kid? Well, the first thing, believe it or not, the first confrontation that I had at St. Leo's were from Chicanos. Okay, and a guy by the name of Rudy Diaz. I think he's a, he's a retired court judge now. And uh, anyway, Rudy Diaz threw a rock at me. And I was sitting down, I didn't know anybody. And so I looked around and, and he, they, they were all laughing. It was about five Chicanos laughing. They, could, they threw a rock at me. So only be knowing to them, I came from projects in, in the in Boyle Heights. I wasn't going to let that go. So I got up and, and challenged the one who threw the rock. I said, who threw that rock? And he, you know, he, he admitted it. I said, well, we've got to have a lock, you and me, right now. And I whipped him. I whipped him good, real off the bat. So his brother jumped in. His brother's name was Augie Diaz, who was bigger. He said, you just beat my brother up. Now you got to fight me. And I said, well, okay. And just at that time, one of the Creoles jumped in. His name was Clarence Cook. Well, never, you know, I never forget these names because it was my it was my my upbringing. So Clarence Cook was a light skinned Creole with green eyes and light skinned. He says, "No, he says he beat your brother fair and square, Augie. You got a tag with me." And that was when the Creoles took care of him. So you actually had a little squabble with a future Superior Court judge who goes by Rudolph Diaz. Rudy Diaz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's the, it's the same guy? Yep. I tell you, with him also in the boys club, we had to, they opened up the boys club over 120th and Central Avenue. Okay, so he was there, they had boxing. So I saw him there, I said, hey, you want to get in the ring with me and go, go another round this time? We have gloves, I won't beat you as bad. 
and he, 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 he took it on and whipped him again. Is the, how many years later was that? About, uh, about three years later. Have you ever crossed paths with Judge Rudy Diaz as a, a grown adult? I'm glad I didn't. He's no. a judge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... So going to St. Leo's was already like uh, a whole, it was like a 180 from Boyle Heights. Yeah, but it, it, it worked out for me because the Creoles ran St. Leo's, and they were a different culture. Uh, you know, they, they, they were a completely different, they were Catholic. They even had their own language. They had their own food, you know, and so they, they was not like me being uh, exposed or let's say completely uh, uh, engulfed on the, in the black community. It was a black community, but it was a Creole you know, uh, sequence. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.